I don't know what it normally sounds like, so. Well, I, I realize that. <laughs>
climb all the way up.
God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call. Mr. Cashin? Here. Mrs. Lewis? Here. Mr. Traver? Here. Mr. Reitenauer? Here. And Mr. Trainer? Here. Okay, the first item up for approval uh, this evening is the agenda for the evening. Uh, Mr. Ferguson, any changes to the agenda or additions? Uh, yes, I have some ads additions here. Uh, first of all, on page 10, on the top section there, you have the two in green, um, Mary Garcia and Tim Hosfeld. Ads. And then um, on page on page eleven top there, and I, I handed these to you, a couple of uh, papers there, um, board members, uh, first one is this sliver, sliver, sliver of paper there that has the, uh, the board gender for board approval compensation for Andrew Larson, uh, that is where the ad is on that page, that's where that one's going to go. Now on page, also on page 10, you would add uh, Catherine Part Pottridge, Catherine Part Pottridge, um, on the top section there <coughs> as a sub-custodian. And then on the last page, page 13, Number two there is a memorandum of understanding, and that is uh, also handed that one out to you as well, between uh, GAEA and the board. All right, motion to approve. Yep. Second. Mr. Cashin. Yes. Mrs. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Traver. Yes. Mr. Reitenauer? Yes. And Mr. Trainer? Yes. Okay, next item up for approval are the minutes to the October 20th regular board meeting and the November 11th, 2020 special board meeting. Uh, both had uh, draft copies sent out. There have been no changes uh, since the submission of the uh, draft copies. Motion to Second. Mr. Cashin. Yes. Mrs. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Traver. Yes. Mr. Reitenauer. Yes. And Mr. Trainer. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, we'll start with uh, recognition tonight. Mike. Um, yes, I think uh, Mr. Olemaker is going to take the floor right off the bat here. Good evening. Uh, to your right there, uh, you will see the Genoa High School uh, Drama Club members there. Uh, for all um, that has not gone well in 2020, uh, if you've tuned into our uh, emails that Ms. Fox sends out or if you tune into our comment tales uh, and you see the different episodes there, uh, this group uh, has embodied taking the challenge of 2020. And while we haven't been able to put together our typical fall play production, uh, they have created a mini series. Uh, there's some real comedic genius in that group. I'm going to ask Ms. Fox to come up. 
Um, I'll warn you, this group's been known to hijack a microphone, so um, who knows? Um, we'll see where this goes. But I uh, want to commend them for, again, making the best out of uh, what can be this year. So thank you to them. Thank you, Mr. O. Uh, good evening. Um, I want to thank Mr. O for inviting uh, the drama students to be here this evening because um, I think they really deserve some of this recognition for all of their hard work and the talent and creativity and dedication that they've shown, not just in past years, but this year in particular. Um, there are two ways that students can be involved in drama in the high school. Uh, they can take drama classes or they could be involved in drama club or they could do both. Uh, tonight I'm just gonna talk really briefly about some of the really awesome things that they've been doing this year. Like Mr. O had mentioned, um, a typical year for a drama club would mean a big production, the fall play. They would spend months together after school learning lines and blocking, uh, painting sets. They'd be making costumes and props, and maybe most importantly, they'd be really growing together as a family. Um, but unfortunately, this year, uh, things had to be different. We had COVID and that wasn't something we could really plan for and it was too risky to put on the fall play and I really dreaded breaking that news to them because I knew that that would be like breaking their hearts um, but they did what they do best and they just said the show had to go on and they found a way to make it work and they didn't just make it work I think they made it work very well um, and on Friday, October 9th, they had the premiere of the pilot episode of Genoa High, the miniseries, uh, TV miniseries. We'd never done anything like it before, <laughs> so it was new for all of us. Um, the series is written, uh, directed, acted, and edited entirely by the students. Uh, Miss Parlett and I just kind of sit there and say, that's not in our budget, <laughs> but everything else is up to them. Uh, they produce one episode a week. They hold pitch meetings every Monday. They film on Tuesdays. They edit on Wednesdays and Thursdays, and then it's released on Fridays. So they are incredibly busy throughout the week, and they manage to do that um, around their otherwise very busy schedules. Um, so, I mean, they're already talking about a second season. <laughs> I consider that a success. Uh, so that's just one way to be involved. Uh, the students who take the drama classes at the high school have also been afforded some new opportunities this year in lieu of assisting with the fall play. Um, they partnered with Mr. Larson pretty recently to produce a series of promotional videos for the College and Career Readiness Program. Um, they also are currently creating portfolios uh, to um, showcase their specializations in either acting, script writing, costuming, or property design. Uh, so I could talk all night. I think you could tell about this. I'm very passionate about them and what they do and what they create. But I really wanted um, to give you an opportunity to hear from them. So I'm just gonna have uh, three of my um, students come on up here really quickly, uh, speak for 30 seconds. Um, I have Sarah Dombowski, a senior, uh, Fisher Burtok, a senior, and Alyssa Lopez, It's been really difficult with COVID knowing that we can't like be a whole big family and just be hugging and everything. But I think we've really overcome this whole thing and making episodes was really fun. Well, we're still doing it too. Um, I think it's really fun that we get to try new things because usually we would just act. But so far, all of us, I think, have script writed, edited, like, Okay, we've wrote, we've acted, we've directed, and we've edited almost every single one. So it's really nice that we get to like do all those things instead of just acting. So yeah, thank you. Um, hi, I'm Fisher for talk. Um, so usually, as Ms. Fox said, we put on a stage production, and little freshman me never thought I would be on that stage like at all whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And then last year, I was offered the opportunity to play Kit Marlowe, which was one of probably a life-changing experience for me. Um, 
I never thought I could act like that, let alone do any of that. So I was so grateful for that opportunity and everything. And then this year, I think we have all really just embraced our cards we were given. And we've put on, I think, some really good acting, work, directing, and yeah. So thank you. Hi, my name's Alyssa Lopez. This year has brought a lot of bad things, but it's also brought a lot of good things. Without this year, I would have never experienced directing, uh, editing, or ed screenwriting, anything that I usually don't do. I'm usually on stage acting, and to have that opportunity to be behind the scenes and do things that I never thought I'd do really put me in a place where I've come to love it even more, and I've come to experience things a hundred times more than I've ever had. And I just really love how we're able to do something even in this horrible situation that we're in. But I love it, so thank you. We all miss hugging too, because the, the board's a bunch of huggers as well. Um, I'll also mention you, you said that there was no money in the budget, but I see Reagan Nye's on this uh, in this club. <laughs> I mean, seriously, just twist his arm down there. And, you know. <laughs> yeah, you gotta use, you gotta leverage what you got, kid. So uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe we get a little less for the weight room and a little more for the drama club. I don't know. No, I just couldn't, I couldn't be more impressed. Um, we have not uh, got to highlight the energy you just talked about and about how you've changed uh, lemons into lemonade, man, and, and how it's different, but some difference better. You know, there's, we talked about it with graduation last year. So many people never want to go back to a gymnasium. They just absolutely loved it, and, and there are things that are different that are better, and that's great. This is something that's, that's really neat, uh, and I'm so proud of you guys, so thank you. I'd like to add that my favorite was the one where um, the young lady was put in the locker and, and forgotten about. <laughs> it was a little dark, but it was a little amusing too, and uh, whoever wrote that, good job. Kudos, kudos. <laughs> oh, I love it. So um, again, thank you guys so much. Uh, we'll just go into you don't have to stay for the whole board meeting, but there's a lot of drama at board meetings. <laughs> last, last month's was extremely drama filled, uh, but uh, I don't know that tonight will be as exciting, but uh, we, we'd love to have you stay, but you don't have to, so. Where can, um, where can the episodes be viewed? Open. What's the YouTube channel called? Uh, Denal High School Drama. We also have um, a Twitter account and an Instagram account. <laughs> <laughs> that is post every Friday as well. Follow us at. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Like, subscribe, okay. Love it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. So we'll just go right back to you, Ben. Uh, you can kick us off for the administration. <clears throat> While you're walking down, too, um, I just would like to recognize uh, the voters of Genoa. Um, I, I just want to say thank you for your support for the renewal of our levy. Um, thank you for those yes votes out there um, and for those no votes that considered us uh, for the uh, additional funds as well. Um, we appreciate your support. Um, and uh, I just want to thank thank you again. So, and uh, with that, I want to continue uh, with some uh, praise uh, to four of our staff members and a handful of students who were responsible for putting together our Veterans Day assembly. Again, uh, one of those things that uh, just because it's uh, different doesn't mean that it can't be as meaningful and impactful. Uh, so, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. John Sandwich for heading that up. I uh, would like to thank uh, Mr. Brian Edwards, Ms. Stacey Deppner for their work with the band and choir, 
and then also Mr. Hurt uh, continuing to work all of his magic behind the scenes uh, to put that out there for us. Uh, this is not the uh, first or the last thing that we will do via video presentation, and I would honestly imagine as we continue to do things, you'll see more and more of that. Um, anytime we don't gather 350 kids in one place uh, is usually a positive thing. So I would see some of these things uh, to continue. Uh, just some updates here for you. Uh, we have a total of 34 uh, students from the high school who've opted into PLP. I uh, just want to make sure everybody knows those students are still monitored and still taken care of by our school counselors, Maria Maluchnik, uh, Tia Thilerucki, along with help from Sue Brown and Christy Beach. Uh, continuing there with some of our academics, uh, our honor roll figures are in. We have, I believe it's 210 total students who have earned either uh, our high school uh, honor roll or high school high honor roll award, uh, that's about 70% of our kids. Another 29 of our students earned honor roll status at Penna, so congratulations to each of those uh, students. Uh, with that, athletically, uh, we kick off the winter sports season this weekend, Saturday at home, girls basketball against Maumee. We then are home next Friday, triple header, Oak Harbor basketball. And then the first week of December, uh, we hit the wrestling mat there as well. Again, another thanks to uh, Tommy Lukey uh, for all of uh, the sweat equity he's put into GHS in helping us um, get ready for green. And through some logistical wizardry, uh, we've tried to make the place as safe as we possibly can uh, for everyone, including uh, the lunchroom. With that, kudos also to uh, Jamie Stahl. Uh, last week, Jamie wore a number of hats for us, um, filled in a lot of different places. So I want to publicly thank Jamie for that. Uh, this coming Thursday, uh, we do have our NHS induction. So again, um, business continues to roll on here with the great accomplishments of our kids. Uh, thank you to Kim Richards for all of her hard work there. Uh, pending your approval, uh, we're going to welcome Tim Hosfeld uh, into the building uh, to help us with uh, study hall coverage and lunch coverage. And um, with that, uh, I do want to share some on some COVID data with you. Uh, I've heard someone say, and I think it might have been Mr. Trainer out in the hallway, uh, that it said with each message from Governor DeWine, it feels like a beg and ask um, for people to follow mandates and rules and things of that nature. Just to put some numbers with the ramifications of people's choices, uh, our numbers at the high school, uh, fortunately, we've only had um, seven isolations, uh, but we have had 39 different students quarantine. When you do the math of that, that comes out to about 460 days of student attendance um, that's impacted um, by isolations, by quarantines. Same thing with the staff, four isolations, five quarantines, about 85 days of service or so. So I know it's sometimes hard to hear these broad messages of do this, do this, do this, but for us, we do have to put some numbers in place there to realize the impact that it does have on us to make sure that we're still in a position to work both of those platforms. Because we, unfortunately, we have continued to grow in the remote process, but the remote process based upon these numbers isn't going away. So we have to continue to go ahead and do the great work that we do in person, but we have to continue to get better and better at the remote part, which I think um, we've grown leaps and bounds, but those, those numbers support that we have to keep being able to do that. So uh, any questions for me while I'm right here at the mic? I would like to thank you for the Veterans Day presentation too. As a, as a vet, I enjoyed it, I loved it. I uh, told everybody that I could tell, you know, I, I passed along. Um, going forward, I hopefully we can, uh, you know, next year we can invite vets, you know, back to, to witness everything in person. But if, you know, if we have to do it virtual again, maybe we can find a way to provide a link so that the outdoor, has, uh, has to that. Yeah, I do believe it's, to your point there, Mr. Cash, I do believe it's on, or at least it was on our school website. Okay, I didn't see that. Thank I don't, you. I don't know if it's still there though. Um, it got passed me by uh, Ms. Malusha, yeah. and so, but thank you. I thought it was extremely <clears throat> well done, and uh, uh, I would like to to thank all the staff who uh, who helped make the Americanism and Government exam come off. That happened last uh, last Friday, and. Uh, I got those exams, and they are being uh, graded as we as we speak. So. Uh
but thank you very much for, for helping that. I know you were absent and such, but uh, for, for all the staff who uh, helped make that happen. So thank you. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Thank you. Kevin? Hi, Kevin Catafias, middle school principal. Just a few things. The uh, transition of having all kids in school in the past week, uh, plus our we have a new secretary who just started two weeks ago, so uh, that's a very important cog in our building. So we, it's a transition piece, and uh, I want to use the word trying here. We're trying our best to make this work, uh, but keep in mind it's uh, very trying on, on our staff as well and our students. I guess I put it into positives and negatives. The positives are that all students are in the building, and we you know, feel that this is the best delivery of education that we can put forward as a positive. Uh, negatives, there's no so social distancing. Pretty much uh, we try our best, but it's definitely not six feet. Um, like Mr. Olmaker said, with uh, quarantines and such, and just students uh, being absent, we're anywhere from 13 to 16 percent absence just about every day and in a typical school year it's probably three or four percent so just a lot of absences so it just creates a little more uh, turmoil in the building uh, still a lot of anxiety among students and staff so hopefully if we can stay in session that will lessen but that still is an issue whether it be uh, the school issue or, or, or COVID-19 it, it is a an issue that we deal with. Uh, just like to acknowledge some people, uh, Larry Blasey and Dan Klissick over, uh, Dan's our maintenance director, but just keeping uh, transportation going. Uh, our mechanic's been off since August. He's had a couple knee replacements, so those guys have really chipped in and helped keep our buses going. We do have some new buses, but that helps, obviously, but uh, our old ones are still pretty old, so when, when they go down, they go down, and. They've been really helpful in keeping things going. And just a, a shout out to our bus drivers, our custodians, and our teachers for uh, taking on these duties to make this uh, work. The transition has worked pretty well, but you know it did take a lot of work, so I'd like to publicly acknowledge all those people. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Any questions for Kevin? Nope. <coughs> Yolanda. Hello, Yolanda Meese, elementary principal. Um, first, I'd like to say, I know uh, the drama club is not here uh, currently, but um, I just wanted to say I had goosebumps over here hearing the opportunities and the experiences they had um, in this time that things have changed. So it was nice to hear like the things that they're being exposed to. Um, so yes, that was, that was a good feeling over there. Um, we have, of course, transitioned to green. I would think that it was a successful transition at the elementary. Um, yes, we have all of our students back, so that is a big positive for us. We love seeing them. Um, we're still working through a couple of things. That's mainly in our cafeteria and drop-off pickup. Um, those are things that we're continuing to evaluate, reevaluate as we go on day by day, um, the process that we have there. Uh, parents can continue to see the uh, things that we have put in place, our, our protocols and that. It is on our slideshow that's on our web page that will stay up there until we transition, if we ever do transition into a new phase. Um, and despite, I know that we have, they have talked about some of the quarantines that we've had. We, we did see a big increase this week, I would say, at the elementary. Um, yesterday, I know that um, Mrs. Earl, our, our nurse, Kim, had sent out a um, handful, if not more, of emails for new quarantine students. We have had some sub shortages at the elementary, and I know it's across the board um, with some of them, with the staff members. And I would just like to thank some of our staff members that have really stepped up to the plate to cover our unfilled positions. Um, you know, I can't thank them enough for them stepping up during this time. Moving on to, I do want to publicly thank Mrs. Earl, Kim Earl, who is our school nurse. Um, she has become an expert at contact tracing, I would say. She has to be commended for all of her time she's putting in. I know I speak to her in the evening sometimes through text message, phone calls, or whatnot, if there's anything new that comes her way. So she is putting in a lot of time with this um, during this time. 
And I'd also like to publicly thank uh, Graymont and Terra Marketing. They just uh, donated Chromebook covers for the elementary, to the elementary, and those will be getting distributed to the teachers and students this coming week, um, the rest of this week. So that is something that I did want to thank them for. Um, they're very nice, and I see one getting passed around a little bit now. Um, yes, I, I absolutely love them. And my uh, calves are hurting from, you know, my tippy toes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? Just, just to, just to uh, tack on, um, Terry Jensen from Terra Marketing contacted me back in, in uh, September or late August and just wanted to see if there was something that she could do um, for the district she wanted to do, you know, and, and she mentioned Chromebook covers and I said, well, you just, whatever you can do, we're going to appreciate it. And she said, well, I probably can only do a couple of grades. She said, but let me see what else I can do. So she actively recruited um, Keith Hilly from Graymont and uh, and got him to go along so that they were able to provide those covers for K through five. So that's awesome. Everybody want to will have you. them and and protect them and hopefully hopefully those those Chromebooks will last longer. So just very grateful for um, Terry and her efforts and, and Keith as well. So uh, Cody did ask me to make a public service announcement. Um, <laughs> uh, when you pull up to the school, have your kid get out of the car. No matter where you pull up to the school, like you don't have to pull in front of the door that your kid walks into. They can walk to that door. So if you could get out of the car when you're in the safe area where you can get out in the elementary, I've gotten several complaints. And Cody said, please share that on the board meeting. Should have done it last month, but uh, especially now there's a lot of uh, parent drop offs. So that was the public service announcement I was supposed to make. I thought we did a little bit better today. Today was great. Today was great. Yeah. Hello, Courtney Cannon, um, Curriculum Director, Testing Coordinator. Um, you'd have thought that we maybe all had spoke uh, before we, we met today, but their um, comments on quarantines really lead me into the growth that our teachers are making and providing um, meaningful instruction for those kids that are not physically in our building. Um, a lot of our pre-service days, as you know, were spent in professional development, um, teaching um, our staff how to record and um, putting together some initiatives for communication. Um, the communication with parents is, is going out weekly um, through a district spreadsheet for a week at a glance. Parents are able to see exactly what's happening um, in their child's classroom. Um, it's basically an outline of what to expect every day. So if it so happens that your child is out, um, that information is available to you um, weekly. Um, the expectation for kids that are able um, is to keep up with their schoolwork if they're out on quarantine, um, you know, if they're physically able to keep up. Um, and our teachers have been able to provide, like I said, meaningful instruction. Um, they're recording. And there's three ways that can happen. A teacher can take their time to pre-record. Um, basically, the teacher in the room by themselves. Um, this happens on Mondays with a lot of our staff. Um, no distractions, no interruptions. They can pre-record their, their lesson and then uh, provide a link for that. Um, some teachers are recording live with the students in front of them. Um, with that being said, you can hear some discussion that might be happening. Um, the teacher is giving that instruction to the students in front of them, recording it, and then posting it for the kids that are not physically in their classroom. Um, some staff is actually are, are actually offering live Zoom sessions um, so kids can tune in live. So there's three ways that our teachers are really um, growing and putting out instruction for students that are not physically in front of them. Um, they are growing and adapting tremendously. Um, many of them are doing things outside of their comfort zone that they never thought in a million years they'd be doing as a teacher. Um, and they are doing it well and they continue to reflect um, and they really are excelling at their craft. So thank you to them for um, kind of taking all of this in stride, um, albeit with lots of stress um, and added pressure, um, but they really are putting out great things for our kids, so thank you. Thank you. Dave, do you have anything for us tonight? I just want to say thank you uh, to Dave. Uh, we said completely do it differently this week than we did.
two weeks ago. So thank, thank you, Dave. I understand how big a lift that is to, to do it normally. To have a second version in the same year, I, I, I know that's a big lift, and we really appreciate it. Uh, Holly's not here. Angie, did you have anything? In, anyone else tonight? Yeah, Matt. Matt. Um, just a few items. First, I want to, uh, fall season is pretty much wrapped up. We have our football awards ceremony on Sunday, and that'll kind of put a wrap on our fall season. Um, want to first just thank a few people, Dan Dittman and Jeff Overmeyer, my uh, event coordinators, did a great job helping me out this year, covering events. Obviously, a lot more intricate work that needed to be done for football games and volleyball and all of our soccer events here, and even our Battle of Turtle Creek. So just all the extra work that we needed to do, they were really helpful. And also Jamie Stahl did a great job helping me out when she was available, helping with tickets and things like that. Um, was always asking me, how can I help? When can I help? When do you need me? So appreciated that work. Um, want to congratulate our boys golf team, our boys cross country, and our boys soccer team. They all won NBC championships this year. A um, little fun stat for you. Um, in the history of the NBC in the fall, um, only twice has a, has a school won three out of the four um, sports in boys, um, and both times it was us. So 2018-19 Genoa, and then this year we did that. Won all three, three out of four. Nobody's ever won four out of four. Uh, some have won two, obviously, but only one school's won, won three twice, so that was us. So pretty, pretty neat little fact. Um, as Ben mentioned, winter sports are, are hopefully uh, scheduled so far, we're we're moving ahead as as um, as we we can. Um, our girls basketball team does open up with mommy. Boys open up next week with O'Carver and wrestling. Um, we had to kind of rework the wrestling schedule, so now they're duels instead of try or quad matches. So there's basically every uh, Wednesday in December and January we'll have a wrestling middle school and then high school wrestling um, duel. So that's all all kind of set and taken care of. Um, and then, I don't, you want me to talk about the NBC stuff now? Or? Yeah, okay. go ahead. That's yeah. fine. Um, you know, I, I met with our athletic council members from the board yesterday, along with Mr. Oldmaker and Mr. Ferguson, just to discuss uh, some of the potential things that are going on at the NBC. Um, there's a potential coming for some expansion um, to, to possibly a 12-team league. I don't want to get into too much of the details, because obviously nothing is at all finalized. We really could remain an eight-team league, we could be a smaller league, or we could grow to 12. I mean, those are all options on the table. Um, so, uh, you know, I think I just want you guys, you know, everybody to know that we'll do, the administration's going to do what's best for our community, for our student athletes, um, you know, trying to make, put us in the best situation we can as, you know, things change and, and schools maybe move, move around a little bit. So, um, you know, I, I, again, I kind of updated our two athletic council Members, is a lot of information, so that you know they can they can, you know, give you some feedback, give you some information on kind of where we stand and what the process is at where it stands right now. So, good. Any questions? Um, just, uh, are we going to be streaming um, our winter sports? Yeah, girls? we will. Um, so, our one of the nice features this year that we were able to do with Huddle. Huddle is the software that we use to watch um, that our coaches use to record games and share film and things like that. We were able to get a huddle focus camera. So that's mounted up in the gym. So that gives us the option to, to live stream all of our games. I also know that Mike Jamison from Toledo Sports Network is working out a deal to, 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 to do a lot of the NBC games this year like he did with football. So um, one way or another, we'll, we'll be able to, to live stream all the events in our high school gym. Excellent. Thank you. As it relates to the realignment, Matt, yeah. I mean, people should know that the change is certainly coming. One way or another, the, the, I believe the configuration so, yeah. of the conference is going to change. Most likely, yeah. Yep. I, w I would assume that is the case um, from the conversations we've What's had. What's the time frame? Um, sooner than later, I think. Uh, we do have a meeting next week with, with some potential teams. So, like, potentially next fall? I don't know that it will happen that fast. Um, okay. There's contracts with yep. teams and conferences, and I would assume uh, at least a couple of years before any actual um, 
realignment happens, if it does. So. Good. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Any comments or feedback from the public? We have nothing online. Bill, it's all you. Okay. Uh, first item is the actual compared to budget for the month of October. Um, a relatively quiet uh, month. Um, only one thing to really talk about in the revenue section, and that's the other line. Um, at this point in the year, um, our receipt of fees uh, and, and a minor portion of pay to participate, um, we're actually down $39,000 in comparison to this time last year. And that's basically driving that line item um, at this point. Um, other than that, the revenue section is very close uh, to where we thought it would be. It's right on track. Uh, through one third of the year, uh, everything's very close. Eight, a little over eight thousand um, dollars in total, uh, favorable variance uh, through one third of the year. So things are are trending uh, quite close to where we thought they'd be. Uh, expenditure section, I talk about it every every month. Uh, the purchase services line, we actually had an adjustment um, payment of. There was a timing issue, a couple timing issues that was that were going on. Um, so we do have a fifty-three thousand dollar unfavorable variance for the month. However, if you look over here year to date, we're only thirty-five hundred dollars off budget. So it's basically kind of where we thought we'd be. Um, we do have um, salary and wages, fringe and benefits, looking uh, fairly good. Uh, there are some cost reductions due to the four-day week uh, that we're uh, going through at this point. Uh, year to date in the expenditures, you know, seventy seventy-eight thousand dollars to the good. Overall, um, we're about eighty-six, almost eighty-seven thousand uh, dollars favorable uh, compared to budget, one-third into the year. What that means, um, the fiscal year twenty-one budget is actually deficit spending of a little over $730,000. So when I say we're about $87,000 better, that is a good thing. However, we're still trending uh, to deficit spend about $644,000 uh, for the year so far. So that's kind of where we're at uh, through one third of the year. Uh, any questions, comments, concerns? No, I appreciate the highlight of that. Um, on budget is a, a pretty big deficit spend, so yeah. I think uh, it's important people understand uh, that piece of it. So thank you. Okay, I'll go on with the uh, items for board approval. Uh, the first item is the five-year forecast. Every May and November, uh, districts throughout Ohio are required uh, to complete a five-year forecast and have it board approved. Um, we went over it last night at the, fi at the finance committee meeting uh, in a little bit of depth. Uh, I'm not gonna go through um, what, we, what we went through last night, but I'm gonna give you some of the highlights uh, of the five-year forecast. Um, back in May, we actually had um, a forecast that w really was put through COVID. Um, we actually uh, tore down three, four, five uh, of our largest line items, thinking that um, basically COVID would take a, a major effect uh, to our to our forecast. Um, luckily, at this point, when you look at where we're at, um, COVID has not. Um, done a, um, a uh, hasn't had a big effect on uh, on our uh, on our budget as we thought we would have it um, we thought real estate tax revenue would be down uh, because of uh, delinquencies and foreclosures that has not really uh, occurred we thought state foundation would be reduced even further than it was back in May uh, that did not necessarily happen 
However, there isn't, um, there are things that did happen. Uh, casino revenue uh, was cut by about 50% this first time around. And investment earnings. Uh, I just did a CD coming off a, I think it was a two year CD at 2.48. And I, I just did another one for about 0.5, 50 basis points. Um, it's, it's, uh, things are really, really uh, taking a dive when it comes to investment earnings. We do have, um, I guess I'll, get, I'll call it a gift, to be honest with you. It's uh, Bureau of Workers' Compensation. Um, throughout the last four or five years, they've given back refunds uh, to our workers' compensation uh, costs. Um, this year alone, they've given one dividend early in the year. Um, they are, they, we just received a second dividend uh, from them, $31,000 here in, in November. And we're supposed to get another dividend from them, $117,000 in December. Um, unfortunately, these are only short-term fixes, but it certainly does, uh, does help with our forecast. Uh, and one thing, year over year, I cannot believe, and I'm, I'm saying this because every year I, I say, well, it's, it's going to end, but our positive open enrollment uh, continues to climb um, and, and climb fairly significantly. Uh, if I remember talking to uh, Superintendent Secretary Rhonda, uh, she noted that there's, uh, there was an increase, uh, double digit increase in, in our positive open enrollment students uh, this year again, once again. Uh, so that continues to provide um, additional uh, revenue to the district. Uh, with all that said, we still have, in the short term, we're relatively stable. Uh, but unfortunately, we wouldn't be going out um, for new monies with a levy uh, if the five-year forecast was stable throughout uh, the five years that we need to do. Um, it, you can see after fiscal, we're in fiscal year 21. You can see at the end, end, end of fiscal year 23 or going into fiscal year 24, uh, we do have a negative cash balance. Um, you're saying, well, that's, only, that's two, two, two and a half years away. Why do you need to mess with it now? Well, uh, that will be here before you know it. And, um, and in the meantime, expenditures are going to continue to rise as our revenues uh, basically stagnate. Um, so that's kind of where we're at uh, for this five-year forecast. Um, short term, fairly stable. Longer term, we're in that time frame where, um, you know, the levy uh, conversation uh, needs to happen. One thing I, I I'm going to bring it up. Um, the, the state is actually looking at a fair school funding uh, program uh, uh, formula. Basically, um, there's get it, they're looking and, and uh, working on it, trying to pass it by the end of this calendar year. Uh, there's testimony uh, being completed um, this week, basically. Uh, about it, but it's called the Fair School Funding Plan, the Cup Patterson Plan. Um, so hopefully um, that can be passed. However, when you go and look at the Fair School Funding Plan, um, it does provide a positive adjustment to our school district. However, it's not, it doesn't provide us, uh, I guess, the golden egg. Uh, it's, it's, it's a positive step in the right direction, giving us additional uh, funding, uh, but it doesn't, um, it will not eliminate future uh, levies and so forth, unfortunately. Uh, but it will put us uh, in, in, better, uh, in better circumstances in comparison to where we are now. Um, right now, when it comes to biennial budget for the state, you never know what they're going to do. Um, you know, I've been through six or seven biennial budgets. I bet, uh, you know, five of them have been either a negative or a stagnation. Uh, so that kind of tells you, um, you're, you basically hope 
with the Cut Patterson uh, coming up, this, this funding plan, that although the steps might be minimal, at least you'll be moving in, a, in the right direction and not stagnating or, or going backwards. So um, that's basically what I wanted to give you uh, for the five-year forecast. Like I said, this is a, an item that is officially adopted in November and May. And um, just, I'll, I'll field any questions. The $30,000 dividend from the uh, uh, workers' compensation that we've already received, is that reflected in the... Uh, it, was, it was received here in November, so it's not in October yet. That was, this was up through October. Okay. So it's not in there yet. I would just comment on the Cup Patterson bill, if you're not familiar, uh, for the rest of the board. Um, uh, I think it was, what, $156,000? Yep. It builds, Annually. Up, it builds up to that, but not till the sixth year? Okay. Yeah, if, if the Cup Patterson uh, plan should uh, be passed, it would be a six-year implementation. Um, how that six year would be, if it would be one sixth year or, or whatnot, or we don't know yet. Uh, those true details have not been um, provided. Uh, however, f for the first, um, or this latest uh, simulation, that provide us, like I said, $156,000 uh, additional funding. Um, you know, uh, not, a, not a game changer by no means, but, uh, but still. I, I, I would, yeah, it's, it's, it's um, a pebble in the pond uh, when you look at the deficit spending that we've got proposed here. So I, I just want to make sure that's clear. Like, it, it, yes, $156,000, it's not a small amount of money, but it is a small amount of money when you're running the school system. Um, it's equivalent to, well, one, one mil is about 190000 so you're talking, you know, three quarters of a mil. That's yeah. what it is, and we just we just asked the community to uh, support a 4.9 mil levy this last time. So it kind of gives you an idea. Uh, yeah, it's not. It is. It, it doesn't it change is just the path of school systems like ours having to ask voters for additional funds. It'll extend it a little bit. Right. But yeah, it doesn't eliminate it. Bill, so we, the long-term need remains. And while we're thankful, as Jeff, uh, Mr. Trainer, mentioned, we're thankful for the renewal being approved and those that supported the new money. But as has been discussed in previous board meetings, uh, the need for the uh, levy approval and new money uh, remains. And people just need to understand that the fr as the further we push it off or Every time we don't we don't uh, approve the new money, um, then the ask probably needs to grow too. Um, people need to understand that as well, um, because there's time frame where we're spending money, we're creating a greater deficit, and to to recoup that we have to increase the ask because the ask is going to be from that point forward. So we're spending money in the interim. So the further we push that off in the future, the, the greater the need um, and the millage will need to be. People need to understand that as well. Correct? That is accurate. What was the cost to us this year by not passing the, <coughs> the levy? You mean? Uh, Funds we would have generated. We would have generated around a little over 900,000, 900, 900 uh, and the reality of it is we, we basically, since we didn't pass in November, um, we'll lose one year's worth of collections. Um, and that equates to about nine-tenths of a mil additional that could potentially have to be uh, asked for um, to make up that, that loss <coughs> of the year. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Uh, for the five-year forecast if not I just need a motion to approve motion. and once the Second. motion so forth I will be sending this down to the state um, for uh, for their filing motion to approve and that was you motion and second by Ron 
Mr. Ka I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Cashin. Yes. Mrs. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Traver. Yes. Mr. Reitenauer. Yes. And Mr. Trainer. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next thing I ask for board consideration is we have bank depository agreements uh, with all three of the local banks, Genoa Bank, Huntington Bank, Premier Bank. Um, every five years, uh, the agreements need to be basically reapproved, uh, and this is the time. Uh, all three of them are coming up uh, for renewal or reapproval. Um, nothing is necessarily changing the amounts. Uh, I think Premier Bank might be adjusting theirs a little bit, but essentially they're, they're remaining unchanged. Do um, you have any questions on these at all? If not, I mean, like I said, they're just depository agreements of what we can deposit within the banks that we use. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cashin. Yes. Mrs. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Traver. Yes. Mr. Reitenauer. Yes. And Mr. Trainer. Yes. Okay, the next item is, is another positive. Um, we actually received uh, a couple of donations. Uh, the first donation was $2,500 from the family of Matt and Kara Wise. Uh, Matt and his uh, wife was here, I think last board meeting. Um, they asked uh, how they could help and they provided us uh, a $2,500 check to, to put towards ongoing expenditures um, uh, from, for, the, for the general fund. So that was the first uh, donation. Second donation you did see uh, this was the second donation, 575 Chromebook covers from Terra Marketing and Graymont. Um, I'd like to recognize both of those uh, with the board approval. Once, uh, once board approved, I will send out letters uh, from the board uh, for our thanks uh, for these two items uh, to these individuals. Motion to approve. Second. Would it be possible to get some uh, students signed from the for the elementary for the covers and maybe from the high school for Matt uh, and his family? Do a, did you say do a sign or no? Uh, like a, something signed for oh. students versus um, you know me and Bill. A big thank you. Yeah. be great but I think for both of these it would be nice to have students sign it as well you know mm -hmm. yeah I mean I was, I'll still yeah no nope, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely yeah all right Mr. Cashin yes Mrs. Lewis yes Mr. Traver yes Mr. Reitenauer yes and Mr. Trainer yes and last but certainly not least uh, once again, uh, on a positive note, we were talking about this um, a time or two, a, a board mem a meeting or two. Um, both Clay Township and Allen Township uh, received coronavirus, coronavirus relief funds. Um, they wanted to provide some of those funds to our district and that has actually occurred now uh, clay clay township provided a check for twenty five thousand dollars to the district and allen township provided fifty thousand um, dollars to be used um, for coronavirus uh, items we basically have purchased um, multiple multitude of items i don't know if you want to comment on what we've what we've purchased um 
Yeah, if I can, if I can remember, we obviously we spent, you know, we spent a lot of money early on on, on basics like uh, hand sanitizer and masks and cleaning supplies and things like that. So we spent a good bit of money on those things to be prepared. Um, we also uh, used some of the money, not so much this money, but some of the money um, that we got earlier along with some of this money to buy the desk guards that our students are using throughout the district. Um, we have just recently purchased uh, air purifiers for the high school, um, for each high school classroom and some of the um, areas are still, still a, uh, a few units that are arriving tomorrow. Um, but those units are, particularly at the high school level where the uh, ventilation system is, is antiquated, um, where is a great need. And obviously most of our cases early on were, were at the high school, so our hope is that we are targeting the area that's, that's more problematic and we can reduce the risk of exposure um, to COVID-19 through uh, the use of those, those machines. But um, uh, we are also, uh, for the sake of ventilation, again, this is, this is the high school because there's no air conditioning in the high school. We, have, um, we are purchasing screens for the windows in the classrooms uh, so that they can open up and get some ventilation. One of the things that we've been told repeatedly is that ventilation and airflow is a key to uh, you know, limiting the, the spread. So uh, we are spending some of that money on those as well. So about half the classrooms will have screens on the windows. I'm sorry, half of the windows in the classrooms will have screens on them, which obviously doesn't help in the winter, but um, you know, when spring rolls around. And then uh, the early, uh, late summer, there's, uh, they can open those windows without the risk of, of multiple bee stings and, and things that they face normally in the, in the, uh, in the fall. Thank you. Um, basically, I just asked the board uh, for a motion to officially approve uh, the acceptance of these funds. Uh, I'm going to make the motion, but before I do, I just want to say thank you to uh, both townships, uh, the trustees. Um, this was something they didn't have to do. Uh, this is something they, they could have um, not taken the time or made the effort uh, to offer this to us um, and I appreciate it I truly do Absolutely. Uh, the need is great and uh, every every dollar counts and these are not small small amounts it's it's where very well appreciated and was put to use immediately so uh, just thank you to all the trustees that were involved in that uh, motion uh, to accept second mr. Cashin yes mrs. Lewis yes Mr. Traver. Yes. Mr. Reitenauer. Yes. And Mr. Trainer. Yes. And if, if maybe, uh, Kevin, if you could do a thank you for, and have the middle schooler sign it for the, the uh, trustees, I think that would be, we do one for the elementary, high school, and then uh, I just think from the students it means a lot more than uh, to me and Chrissy and Ron. So. <clears throat> yeah. That's all I have. Okay, if we could turn to page nine on the, in the agenda. We need the board to approve the following there as listed. So moved. Second. Good. Mr. Cashin. Yes. Mrs. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Traver. Yes. Mr. Reitenauer. Yes. And Mr. Trainer. Yes. On page 10, I ask the board to approve the employment of the following supportive personnel. Uh, I can do them all at once here. Chrissy made, Mrs. Lewis made a motion. Okay, I didn't hear, sorry. Okay. Second. Mr. Cashin. Yes. Mrs. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Traver. Yes. Mr. Reitenauer. Yes. And Mr. Trainer. Yes. Okay, on page 11. Wait, 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 we did, we did all of them at once. Did you take them? Did you take them all at once, Bill, or did you take them? I took them all at once. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
then Ron should have abstained from the vote. It was just the top. I was just the top half. The top four. But, but Mike just said to turn to page 11. Okay. Oh. I thought we took them all at once here. Uh, yeah, Ron can't vote on Derek. Okay. Well, let's backtrack there then, Bill. So that one was all except number one from the bottom? Okay. Yes. So I need the board to approve then number one on the bottom. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cashin. Yes. Mrs. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Traver. Yes. Mr. Reitenauer. Abstain. And Mr. Trainer. Yes. Just want to point out that Mrs. Lewis did not delay in her yes as uh, Ron did for her son. <laughs> She's not nearly the smart aleck. <laughs> I'm all business. Okay, uh, we're page 11 now. Um, the board to approve the uh, appointment of the following certificate of personnel. Um, the number one there is, uh, and I, again, I gave you those half slips or quarter slips there. Um, that is for reimbursement um, for Andrew Larson in his capacity of career readiness coordinator for time uh, worked outside of his contract days. Have we made any adjustment to his, his regular work schedule to accommodate the, the workload? That is, our, that is our next step in the process. We wanted to get him uh, paid for these hours, and then we have to sit down and try to figure out, you know, going forward what that's what he's going to need going to be for those hours. Um, obviously, things are looking a little different right now with COVID, but uh, we will take care of that here uh, before going forward to the next meeting. I'll move. Second. Mr. Cashin. Yes. Mrs. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Traver. Yes. Mr. Reitenauer. No. Mr. Trainer. Yes. Okay, we can turn to page 13. Board to approve number one there in lieu of transportation, which is in your handout. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cashin. Yes. Mrs. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Traver. Yes. Mr. Reitenauer. Yes. And Mr. Trainer. Yes. Uh, number two there, I need the board to approve this memorandum of understanding. Um, again, you've got the copy of this there. Um, the memorandum of understanding is for the purpose of allowing the Board of Education to temporarily staff the Genoa Middle School Library aid position with an employee from the classified staff for the remainder of the 2021 school year. The use of the classified employee will be on a year-to-year -year basis until such a time as it's financially feasible for the Board of Education to fill a position with a certified employee. Uh, this MOU will be visited and re-signed re yearly. Um, just as a, remind, just a reminder, this position in the, in the middle school has been staffed by a classified person for a number of years, but contractually in the GAEA contract, um, it specifically said when that position person retired, that it would go back to being a certified person in that position. So basically what we decided is just with, a, with in, the, in view of kind of cutting costs, that, that that was more money than we could afford to spend at that point in time. So um, uh, the GAE and, and Holly were willing, Holly Kimbon were willing to sign off on this so that we can at least uh, partially staff it. This is, we are not gonna staff it at a full full day. It's going to be a five and a half hour day. Um, right now, Mr. Um, Catafias is, is covering study halls in there in the mornings and, I, and uh, also lunches as well. He is trying to spread the kids out. He's got some lunch, kids taking lunch in there and I want to, um, I think his time's better spent elsewhere uh, than in there. So that is at the root of this MOU. Motion to approve. Second. 
Mr. Cashin. Yes. Mrs. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Traver. Yes. Mr. Reitenauer. Yes. And Mr. Trainer. Yes. And number six, since we already discussed the NBC expansion, um, we covered that. And before I turn this back over to Mr. Trainer, I just want to take a moment as well to thank everybody for this transition. Uh, the classified staff, the certified staff, the administration, um, just all came together to do a great job. Uh, I know this was very, uh, this was very scary for some people. It was a little bit of trepidation amongst everybody going forward into back into full four days a week. I, I can tell you the kids are excited about it. They're happy to see their their classmates and teachers. In spite of some of their their concerns, they are happy to see all their kids there as well. Um, it, it things it, things went very smoothly. Um, and I think by late last week, kids were kind of tired because it was the first time that any of them had been in school two days in a row or more <laughs> since last March. So it was a little bit of a, a challenge for them, and, 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 and uh, it continues to provide a challenge for our, our staff, our teachers, um, just trying to keep up, as, as has been noted here earlier, uh, with, the, with the quarantines, the kids on quarantine and, and the kids in front of them. So, but that, that transition went very smoothly. They've done a great job. Um, they're just really devoted to our kids, and uh, I think it shows. And we're going to get through this. You know, our, our, if you look at our daily dashboard that we added uh, this past week, um, you can see what's happening day to day, and our numbers are down from last week um, and the prior week. And I think as long as we continue to take care of business, not just here but outside of school, and that's really the thing that I'm actually quite frankly more worried about, what, what's going on outside of school day because I think we're taking a lot of great steps here and precautions here to keep kids safe. But you know what, kids are kids and, and they'll do what they do when they, when they leave the building. And, and um, we got the holidays coming up, which is gonna be a challenge for people. I know there's a lot of people questioning what they're gonna do for Thanksgiving, the, the traditional large gatherings, those things are, are being reconsidered and, and I get that. Um, but you know, I think if people just take the extra precautions outside of school, and kids do that, including kids, and especially the kids, I think we'll be good for the long run here. So just uh, ask that you continue to make those efforts and thank the staff for everything they've done to make this work. I'd just echo that. <clears throat> I'm sorry? I said I would echo that. Yeah. Any other uh, business or comments from the board? Um, you have included in your uh, board packet the minutes from our Zoom meeting for the Scholarship Foundation. Um, so I will go over those just if you have a chance to get those. We are extremely close to our $1 million goal, and hopefully we'll achieve that in 2021 um, with some new scholarships that are coming our way and some additions as well. So, Excellent. Thank you. So we will be going into uh, executive session uh, to consider the employment of a public employee. There will be no action after. Okay, Can you motion? Second. 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 Oh. Mr. Cashin. Yes. Mrs. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Traver. Yes. Mr. Reitenauer. Yes. And Mr. Trainer. Yes. And at 709.